Welcome to lecture number 43, everyone, our first lecture on chemistry, so chemistry part one. We're just going to go over a couple of the basics, review some terms, and just give you an overall picture, okay, without too much detail. So let's get into this, all right? Let's recall our picture for atoms. Atoms, by definition, well, certainly electrically neutral, right? The number of protons equals the number of electrons. Okay, and we said atoms are mostly empty space. And if the number of protons, number plus, is not equal to the number of minuses, we call those ions. Remember what ions in the body are called. Uh, so a positive ion is a cation, negative ion is an anion. All right, just a review. And from nuclear, we should remember that uh, the identity of an element is determined by number of protons. So you could have the same number of protons, a different number of neutrons. Remember, that's called an isotope, isotopes of the element. And we'll see isotopes of an element have the same chemical properties. Write that down. Isotopes have the same chemical properties because chemistry is going to be all about electrons. First of all, molecules are going to be combinations of atoms. So for example, water, H2O, right? There's two hydrogen atoms with one oxygen, H2O. So we're going to talk about combinations of atoms, all right? And chemistry, again, is going to be all about electrons going to their lowest energy level, all right? When it's a chemical reaction, if something combines and the system or the electrons go to a lower energy level, remember, anything, anytime anything goes to a lower energy level, if something falls, there's a sound, energy is given off, right? Energy is conserved. Remember, potential energy gets converted to kinetic energy for the diver. So energy is conserved. For chemi chemical reactions, uh, usually it's heat. Sometimes light is given off in a chemical reaction because the system's going to a lower energy state. So energy must be conserved. Energy is given off. Dope. Fantastic. Now, our naive picture of an atom, why is it naive? Because we know electrons really are not going around. They're really some kind of standing wave, probability wave. Remember, they don't radiate. If electrons really were behaving as particles, they would fall into the nucleus and we would not exist. Okay, so classical physics fails us and we need quantum physics and all this mysterious stuff of the subatomic world. Okay, mysterious because we live in a macroscopic world. Um, the lowest state, n equal one, the first level called the ground state is the ground state energy or lowest energy state. Um, everything wants to be in their lowest energy state. Electrons want to be in their lowest energy state. You and I want to be in our lowest energy state. Okay, why don't the electrons all fall down to n equal one? The reason is something called the Pauli exclusion principle. Remember that Pauli or Pauli exclusion principle, which gives us a pattern for the electrons. Okay, so the Pauli exclusion principle essentially says no two electrons can be in the same place at the same time and have exactly the same properties. Okay, so what are properties of the electrons? Well, quantum mechanically, we don't care. Uh, electrons spin and so forth. We don't care about that. So let's just say it has a, one electron has a red shirt and blue shoes or whatever. Another electron in that same room can have a red shirt and blue shoes. You can have a red shirt, but maybe green shoes. So there's got to be something different about the electrons. Okay, they're really not wearing shoes, so don't take this literally. The Pauli exclusion principle is what keeps everything from falling down to that lowest energy level. So they're stacked in a certain way, keeping every electron separate because of their different properties. Okay, if every atom was already in their lowest energy state, the n equal one, then oxygen would never combine with hydrogen to go to a lower energy state because they're already in the lowest energy state. So there'd be no chemistry, no biology, no you or me, no earth, no planets, nothing, okay? No molecules, no combinations of atoms because the atoms are already in their lowest energy state. All right, let's talk about a bit about electron configuration, okay? And this could be very detailed and complicated. We're going to, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as possible, give you a si very silly analogy, okay? Uh, and then in the next lecture, we'll get into more details with this electron configuration. All right. Well, let me just tell you, when I was a child, you know, early 60s, um, I remember hearing about this doctor, Dr. Albert Schweitzer. He was a missionary in Africa. 
right? Back today, you hear about a lot of missionaries, a lot of charities. But remember, we had no internet. We had like three television stations. We didn't know much. So I learned about this doctor. I'd never heard of anything like this, who was from Germany and went to Africa to build a, a, a hospital to help poor people. To me, that was the most amazing thing, okay? So imagine that I grew up and I became a doctor, okay? And I want to start a hospital. And I don't have much money, okay? So my hospital is going to be very simple. It's going to be one room or one floor. This is my first floor. And I'm going to have two surgery rooms, S and S. I have two surgery rooms. That's all I can afford. Now, of course, I'm a great surgeon. I, that goes without saying, right? Magic. So people start giving me money. I get more famous. Well, I don't care about the fame, but I care about the money so I can build a bigger hospital. So now I have a little more money and now I build on to my hospital. Okay. Now I make a second floor. Okay. I'm going to put a surgery room and another surgery room, but I have this really silly rule. Uh, I'm ADD. I have a silly rule that I cannot put anybody on the second floor until I fill up the first floor. That's my rule, the rule of the Mancini Hospital, okay? So if I have two patients, I can't put one on the first floor and one on the second. I have to put both patients on the second, first floor. The third patient, fourth patient would go on the second floor, but I have to fill up the first floor, okay? Now, I'm doing so well, not rich enough to make a third floor, but I'm going to kind of make some stairs and do an addition to my second floor, okay? So still on the second floor, I'm going to put an addition, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to put six more rooms. How cool is that, okay? These six rooms now are going to be, I'm going to erase the numbers, And I'm going to say, I know it's silly, let's call them P for proctology, okay? So now I have six proctology rooms, okay? Once again, I have this crazy rule. I don't know why, okay? But I cannot put anybody on the two, the proctology rooms until I fill up my two surgeries on the first floor and my two surgeries on the second floor. I must fill these up and then I can start filling up that. So notice the first floor, I have two, two patients. I was almost said electrons. Ha 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 ha. On the second floor, I have eight patients, right? Two on the first floor, two plus six is eight patients on my second floor. Now I'm doing so well as a surgeon. This is what I'm going to, turns out I build a third floor. And again, I put two surgery rooms and again, oops, I'll stop here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a P, two, three, four, five, six. Now I put six more proctology rooms, okay? So my silly hospital has two surgeries on the first floor, two S's there. Then I have two surgeries on the second floor, six proctologies also on the second floor, but I can't put anybody in proctology until I fill up these two surgeries and these two surgeries. Once I have two plus eight, once I have 10 patients, now I can go to the third floor. And But again, I cannot put anybody in the third floor proctology until I fill up the third floor surgery. So this is pattern. This has to be filled, then this, then this, then this, then this, and it goes on and on. OK, so my silly hospital is going to be our model for the electron configuration, how we're going to fill up the electron energy levels. OK, so we'll do that in the next lecture. I will be very complete and then we'll try to understand uh, a periodic table and uh, chemical properties and what's going on. OK, so that's the end of this intro lecture and in the next lecture we'll get into more detail regarding electron configuration be safe take care peace